Hi, uh, my name's Amelia Lyons. I'm a group analyst and an accredited uh, Balint Group leader in the UK. So in this uh, video, I want to briefly explain how exactly Balint Groups work. And I want to do that in about seven minutes. So let's see how we get on. So what actually happens in the groups, in the mechanics of a Balint Group? So normally you've got two co-leaders. That's the preferred position. Group comes together for around 45 to 50 minutes if you're just covering one case and double that if you're covering two. So the group settles in and identifies someone who's got a patient on their minds and who wants to talk about it. So somebody who's preoccupying them and uh, they can't sort of let go of in some way and they need to talk about it in the group. So the group agrees that the doctor then tells the story and has up to 15 minutes to tell that story. And the group really listens to the story and really listens to the feelings aroused in themselves. Um, sometimes in a balanced group, you'll see people give no eye contact really to the person presenting because they're trying to get in touch with themselves and what feelings, images uh, and associations are coming up for them as the story goes on. Now, once that's done, 15 minutes, uh, the next bit is that the doctor sits back. So they sit outside of the group or metaphorically outside of the group. Some people choose to actually sit outside of the group or a little bit aside from the group. Um, and some stay in the group, but they're out of the group now for the next 15 minutes. They're out of the conversation. So the group talks about the story and the doctor can relax and just listen. So in that way, they get a bit of thinking space not having to sort of constantly justify themselves or talk about something. They're now sitting out, they're listening, they're getting that distance, what you might call the reflective position, the third position. As they see the group talk about the case, uh, they're able to look at it from the outside and that's uh, important. Now at the end of that discussion, the doctor then rejoins the group for around the last 10 minutes. And the conversation continues and understanding is shared. Now, it's not about the doctor saying, oh, you got that bit right and you got that bit wrong. And I don't like what you said, because that's definitely not the case. It's really not about that. It's only about sharing people's impressions. Uh, there's no one impression that's better or worse than another. The doctor may resonate with some more on that day than another day but in a week's time they might be walking down the street and something that somebody else said in the group might just pop out and really uh, resonate then so there's no telling um, what's uh, what's important or, or valuable but we hope at the end of the group the doctor will have a, a greater understanding about their relationship with the patient so the actual method itself really values free association in a non-judgmental environment. So we're looking for the doctor to tell their story in quite a free associative sort of way, tell the story, their feelings, um, and just associations with what happened between them and the patient. Uh, we're looking at fostering unconscious to unconscious communication between the group and the doctor. And we'll talk about that a little bit further in a minute. The objective is merely to share associations, images, thoughts, feelings about what's happening and extend understanding of the patient. We don't want to solve the problem. We just want to extend the understanding that the doctor has of their relationship with the patient. Now, that whole process of the group may help to unlock something that might be blocking the doctor's unconscious in uh, enabling uh, their relationship with the patient. And our focus is on the continuing beneficial relationship with the patient. So there are some key concepts uh, in Balint, notably the, the idea of the unconscious. So the unconscious as being something that is out of our awareness. So the iceberg is a lovely image of the unconscious because you can see there's a top bit, which is the conscious bit. And then there's the unconscious bit, which is the bit below the surface. And as you can see, uh, there's a hell of a lot more going on below the surface than there is on the surface. So here we can see, for example, that we have a sort of doctor patient relationship going on. 
Um, and underneath it, uh, there may be something quite different happening, but we have yet to uh, understand that. OK. Um, and we hope that something in the group will shed some insight into what's really happening. So we want to raise awareness of the unconscious in the communication between doctor and patient. We want to raise awareness of the quality and patterns of the patient's projections onto the doctor and the doctor's counter-transference in relation to that. And then reach a place where we can reflect more objectively. And finally move on and back into the relationship for the doctor with more objectivity. Now what do I mean by those projections? Or what's known as transference and counter-transference? Well I've got a few examples here and I'll just talk through perhaps one or two. So lots of patients um, come into uh, the doctor's uh, waiting room and they may think of the doctor as some kind of benign, kindly figure who's going to be nice to them. Um, uh, often uh, patients may have a projection onto the doctor such as that, um, uh, or they may have a projection that's um, maybe to do with their early experiences of authority figures that might not be so positive, it might be the doctor's going to punish me, the doctor's going to tell me off, um, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, early experiences with authority figures are likely to um, have an impact on what the patient projects onto the doctor. Now the patient isn't the only one doing the projecting, of course the doctor does that too. Um, and the doctor may have projections onto the patient or they may have counter experienced counter-transference in relation to what the patient has put onto them. So for example, if the patient puts onto them the notion of being the kindly parent, uh, the doctor may behave as the kindly parent. On the other hand, they might feel a bit resentful about the patient sort of thinking about them as a parent and actually, I don't want to be your parent um, and, and not necessarily behave in a sort of kindly manner. They might be more straightforward, more blunt, more plain speaking, um, and in that way perhaps disappoint the patient um, that this person isn't this benign, kindly, cuddly person that they thought they were. Um, so you've got this kind of interplay going on between the doctor and the patient, and often it doesn't really matter because the patient comes in, the doctor gives them prescription, off goes the patient, and everyone's happy. But in other cases, when um, and this is why balance groups um, came to pass as well, is because um, patients repeatedly came to the doctor, sometimes with nothing very obviously wrong with them, inverted commas, physically, um, but they might be disturbed in some way emotionally um, and so on. And um, But the doctor doesn't quite know what to do with that. Um, and that can become quite a stressful situation because the doctor doesn't really have a cure up their sleeve or doesn't have a prescription that can take care of the patient. And then things can become a bit more um, complicated. So you can see that the patient might have a projection such as um, uh, they perhaps they're, they're being sectioned by the uh, doctor and they would see the doctor as the jailer and the punisher. Now the the doctor's response might be, look, I'm not a judge, you know, I'm not sadistic, I'm not out to lock you up. And they might feel cross and misjudged by the patient. And so you've got a, a sort of an interplay happening then between the doctor and the patient where uh, one's feeling quite cross, each of them are feeling quite cross with the other. And as you can see then, the effect on the relationship is going to get quite quickly stuck or fairly negative. A negative associations and, and then there's um, uh, that trusting relationship has perhaps been sabotaged. So we can see that um, the doctor then, if we talk about it in more detail, the doctor tells the story to the group, they talk about the encounter, they talk about how they feel and I hope it's become clearer now about how important it is to understand uh, the feelings that the doctor is holding because this can be quite telling about the uh, transference or the projections that the patient is putting on the doctor. So the doctor might say I feel quite cross uh, and the group says well, kind of like why are you feeling cross? Well you know they're treating me, um, I feel they're judging me 
um, and I'm feeling like I'm the sadistic jailer, uh, then that gives us a sense of where the patient is in that relationship. And meanwhile, you've also got what's going on in the group. So as the group is listening to the story, they're having their own feelings and associations that are going on. They might quite associate with the patient. Uh, they might quite associate with being the doctor. And initially, they will usually associate with their colleagues and then later on uh, associate more with the patient. Um, and those are all shared and almost put up on the table for grabs, as it were. Um, and that, all of that is information, is important emotional information um, and what I would call the group's um, counter-transference. So the group is sharing how they're feeling and they're associating around how they're feeling. They're sharing images um, and feelings um, in an honest and open manner. Um, and as they do that, then... Uh, the doctor is beginning to gain more insight about perhaps more about how the patient is feeling, more about how they are feeling. Um, perhaps they haven't appreciated the kind of pressure that they felt under or they felt a bit trapped in some way in the perception. Um, and as more is shared, so the doctor feels more released and is able to um, unhook, if you like, from from something that's been uh, maybe turned into something fairly negative from an initially neutral action. So there's a lot that happens in the context of the group and it's really all about um, feelings being shared, feelings by the doctor, feelings from the group and the more of those honest open feelings can be shared the more images and associations that come up that can be shared, that's going to lend more and more insight into that unconscious relationship between the doctor and the patient. So as that happens and the doctor is sitting on the outside, they're sitting back and watching, they're able to think more clearly. Whereas when you're in that pressured relationship at the time, it's harder to think straight. When you're out of it and you're watching the group sometimes even play out that sort of relationship that is going on, then um, the doctor begins to digest it more fully, appreciate it more neutrally, see how they might have got caught up in something, um, and uh, at the same time um, appreciate at a much greater depth uh, what's happening for them and their patient, and that in itself uh, helps to sustain curiosity and empathy um, about the relationship and for both the doctor and the patient actually. So Rimmer commented that balance groups are about training doctors to have a better understanding of their patients. And Sklar, who wrote a recent book on balance, commented that the entirety of the work of the balance group is about understanding the unconscious relationship of the doctor and patient from the counter transference of the doctor. So if you think about it, the balance group works, you've only got the doctor in the group. So and it's entirely them and their feelings that you're working with. You haven't got the patient, you have only got the doctor. So that doctor becomes the focus and then that interplay between the group and the doctor surfaces more and more material. So thank you very much.